Hi everyone, Jeremy here from Flatware Creations. Um, camera's over here today. So I am doing a whole bunch of spoon slash fork rings. Um, I have a big order to do. Get you guys up here. Um, I'm basically going to be hanging out and uh, answering questions, talking to you guys. Uh, this is going to be a very long video because I actually have to work. So I'm going to get all of these done tonight. Uh, and let me hit enter on that. How's my sound? Whoever hops on there. Um, I have a little fan going up here. My wife is live in the living room. I don't have a door yet. But um, I'm going to get everything set up. I'm going to put you guys back up so you can see the top down. Basically, we're doing from scratch. Um, I have a bunch of stirring spoons, teaspoons, um, a bunch of smaller uh, forks. Not a whole lot of spoons. I do have one really nice spoon, sugar spoon that I'll be doing. There we go. Um, but like I said, I have to get to work. I have a whole lot to do, so we're going to start flattening these guys out. Um, get my tray over here. And let's get some work done. I'll watch in the comments to see if anybody says anything. And as soon as I see it, I will try to answer all the questions. Um, if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Um, it helps me and the channel out a lot. Uh, please share with your friends, other media, let people know uh, what I'm doing. If you guys have any requests, I'm going to start marking everything here on the wall. Um, I have a bunch of projects, like I've mentioned before, that I'm going to be getting to. So, um, yeah. So here we go. I'm going to work, people. Headphone land. Oops, just shut it off. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me get you guys up here. Shut off the autofocus. There we go. Camera control. Turn the zoom off. Apply. Okay, or focus off. All right, everything's still working. All right, here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is start flattening these guys out. And I think there's like 70 of these that I need to get done. So this bowl, I am not flattening out. It is guaranteed to break right here and right here. So I'm just going to flatten this out enough to where I can mark it. And I think there's like 70 of these I'll be doing going through the process and this is the normal <laughs> if I'm going to do something I generally do it in batches so I've literally sat all day and done nothing but makes spoon rings and spoon rings is kind of a misnomer because a lot of forks are used also I've used knives but I like these little forks they're nice and thin
and some of these guys are pretty rough. You can see they're really tarnished. So we're going to spend some time with the uh, buffer going to just a little bit. Do do do. Got my headphones going. And basically it's just repeat. Hi Vicky. Thanks for saying hi. How are you tonight? You can kind of see how fast this is going. Every step is pretty much the same thing. It, it takes about a minute or so to make an individual ring. So I think I have 70 here. Whew. This guy is very thin. Plating looks okay. I think I have a couple elephants in here too. I like to use the forks that have the patterns for elephants. I just think it gives them that kind of Middle Eastern blanket kind of feel. African. There's one. like this guy it's got that nice pattern up there so this will easily become an elephant a lot of these forks will become cats or dogs Some of wind chime parts. a solid one. I'm going to try and move you guys up here. We'll see how that is. It looks like the volume is okay. Because I keep, I always tap my chest. So I was hitting the microphone. Yep, one day soon I will have a door. And I'm going to make a light that says recording on the outside. <laughs> okay. The studio is closed. Oh, that was my phone. So I'm using 
these stirring spoons, the long teaspoons, um, for rings because they have a lot smaller profile. So if you want to easily get those smaller dainty rings, that's where you uh, just an easy place to find those size rings. Whenever you make a post, you got to be on it. <laughs> Somebody asked if um, I have a shop order form. So I have my Etsy shop, and then I have um, another website that I'm rebuilding now. Um, so I'm just sending her there, and anything that I have on my pictures, I can try and recreate. smiley face because everything needs to end with a smiley face because I'm smiling all right back to work Let's just stick this guy right there so I had I've been rebuilding a camper I think it's a 26 foot camper that my daughter bought so she can live in our backyard. <laughs> so it was totally gutted and I rewired it, gutted it the final little bit. I just get gotten through installing half of it with uh, foam insulation and I got my plastic up and then I got my brown board up got that tape she painted it and I was like I was up till 3 a.m. this morning before <laughs> before Jamie yelled at me it's 3.30 in the morning. Someone's going to call the police. <laughs> what do they call it? A hyper fixation? Hyper focus? I don't know. Once I start something, I can't really stop. It just continually pounds in my head and I can't think about anything else. And I know that she really wanted to move out there, so... So I really wanted to get it done for her, and I knew that I had orders coming up. I think 70 should take care of both these orders. So I'm just double tapping here. So as this first I call it the first drop and then I hit here and then I go back to here and I finish it out that gives me a little dimple in the middle but that's easily flattenable on the anvil and it's not a crinkle which is what you don't want so drops down once I've got my dimple 
I go towards the front. Drop that down once over the front again. So it's nice and flat, just with that little dimple. You just want to make sure that you're not pushing down so hard that you leave an, an edge from the little anvil here, or the little stamp. All right, two more and then we're on to that. Step number two. So normally I'll just toss on my headphones and just kind of zone out for a couple hours, put myself on autopilot. And I think that is it. I did have a knife that I wanted to do. I put it back in here. Where'd it go? I don't think I flattened it. Hmm. Oh well. You go up there, get rid of those blocks, go back to this guy. So we'll be back there in a few minutes. We're gonna bump everything over. And yeah, I'm not gonna go through and tackle all of those. So I do have a small bucket here. Get the zoom back. Oops. Or not zoom, but autofocus. There we go. So I do have a bucket. Basically, it's my assembly line bucket. I finished a piece. I'm going to drop it in there. Most of this is going to go through the process a couple of times but it takes so long to do each step sometimes. Let me move that over so I can read the chat. There we go. Um, okay, so my measurement is right here. So I have three nails, three little nails right here. You can kind of see them right here. So I have a mark also right here for standard ring size, little small permanent marker, go to there. And this customer wants uh, straight round rings. So I need to make sure that I get a bunch of those for her. The coolest part sometimes is you'll get a ring like this we can make this one if we take this and we make it a straight ring I have enough left over to make a smaller ring if I cut it off there this here would be just one small ring I don't think that's gonna do it though this one might not be long enough, but I need this. So that's where we're going. So right now I'm just flattening these up against there and going to my mark. And I think because most of these are just regular, nothing special patterns, I'm just gonna do all of these flat, just regular round rings. So it makes it easy on me. I only have to grind them all down to one size. And you gotta be careful with these guys here. Uh, some of these will get really thick. So if you look at the difference, 
this one's like half the thickness of this so you got to be careful with some of these and I'm not gonna buff these out until after they are um, cut and shaped and normally I would take and um, I would take and just after I get them shaped toss them in the tumbler give them about 45 minutes in the tumbler with a bunch of Dawn just to make sure I get all the oil and grease off hi Kathleen um, by straight I mean where'd they go straight like this they are let me get this out of the way they're overlapping here so from the top it's just a straight ring um, where do my curved ones go so I have a couple here And right here, silhouettes. <laughs> Somewhere in the disaster. Oh, there we go. Hi Teresa and these are called bypass rings because they spiral and then I have these that I've made that I'm gonna put up on our website these are call them saddle rings it's the entire spoon So this is a souvenir spoon. I couldn't get it polished up because of the metal, but it turned out really nice. Um, this is one that was um, just an end cut off and it turned into a nice little ring. A little cutie. And then you can also do it with forks. Like this is the orchid pattern, but the fork is wrapped on the inside. So I like I like the saddle rings, and they're all kinds of different sizes. that and that but so we're making these today I can make them specifically if you want them to touch that just takes a measurement um, three and a half inches actually I totally forgot what I measured these at um, basically what it gives me I guess uh, let me get you guys up here I guess um let me see actually i have this guy so these are just maybe three and a quarter inches i guess i gotta get down buddy um, yeah so it's like three and a quarter but the way I make them, I make them so that I can overlap. And I can normally get from 
about a 5 up to almost a 13 just by running up and down the mandrel and I have had a couple cases in the past where I had to take the ring out to the vendor a couple of times because their knuckles were just so big so normally guys their knuckles are just so big that I had to go beyond the size of my my mandrel my mandrel goes up to a size 15 <laughs> 15 is pretty big I'm sorry I forgot to shut off the autofocus there we go Um, so yeah, they, the little, uh, stirring spoons are great because a lot of people really like the smaller profile than you have with a regular, um, what I just did was this was curved. So I put it back over here at the bench. Actually, you can see that in that one. Cool. Yeah, my my OCD, it's so much easier for me to do the same thing over and over. So I, I took a lot of measurements and it took some trial and error uh, to get it down so that I could just do one size. And the next step after we cut them is the profiling. So I want uh, my profile will make it, you'll be able to see how uh, just by changing the profile a little bit, I'm able to keep it looking nice and keep it, it smooth so that the, as a customer who's wearing it or if it gets resized it stays comfortable and it doesn't get uncomfortable whether it gets larger or smaller so flatten them out mark them all out the nails really help instead of doing this and trying to measure it out I've had measurements on the top of my bench just disappear. So these hardly ever get touched. It's just a nice spot to have them and the nails just kind of catch. And the, the variation that maybe goes through a little bit. So if one's pointier than the other, they're going to be off just a little bit, but not enough to really make a difference. Do I have another one of these? Yeah. I don't see one. So I'm going to take this one off. And I'm going to here, which is about three just over three and a half inches this is going to let me spiral so i'm gonna put this one off to the side because that's the only one i think i'm going to spiral it's such a nice pattern to not have one of each kind each style Yeah, for m most of what I do, I do it in batches because it's so much easier for my brain to do things. One thing over and over. With bracelets, oh gosh. The only thing I like doing less <laughs> than bracelets is earrings. They're so small and the same amount of work. I like making earrings, but it... The tediousness of it is just crazy for me. My brain does not like it. Yeah. 
So I think I counted 70 here and I may have added one or two. Um, I'm doing mostly forks today because I know here really shortly I'm going to have another order for 50 or 100 bud vases. And those use a whole uh, teaspoon or um, tablespoon. So this gives me a use for these small forks. Normally I'll take and I'll use the forks for my cats and my dogs. So if you look here, this round one, it's rounded off at the top. And then this one here has the corners. So the round ones are my dogs. We'll just rough in a dog here real quick. <laughs> that one looks more like a horse. So there's a little doggy. Oh. And then the cats. Pink, pink, little smiley face. So we got a cat and a doggy. And I have a bunch of different stencils for the dogs. I think we're up to almost 40 breeds of dog. And I got that one marked. Not that one. Um, so all of these, once they get cut off here in the next step, they'll get reclassified into those little, uh, those groups. So all the cats, I call them cats. This is a dog. This is a cat. Sometimes I'll use these if I want to make a big rounded out, hunched up kitty, like a Halloween cat. What? You heard cat and you came running? Come running. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, there's the knife. I knew I had a knife. I'm going to make that a whole ring. I haven't made a knife ring in a while. And like I said, a lot of times I would have already taken, cut these off. Um, buffed out some like this guy right here is really tarnished. It looks kind of shiny, but it's tarnished. I'd run it through the buffer real quick, toss it in the tumbler, and then whenever it got done, I would, um, so solid ring. Sometimes it's so hard because if I just carried this down just a little bit further to here, this would become a spiral or a bypass ring. But this was a nice one. And I'm going to turn this bowl into something. Don't know what yet, but it will become something. And it will be something, something cool. Okay. So this knife is over here. So this knife. Is five inches long. <laughs> Thank you. 
they are a lot of fun to make and I think I posted yesterday I think it was I posted on Instagram or TikTok um, a whole bunch of different dogs that I'd made over the years you don't go there yet all right so I'm just gonna make this guy here actually I need to buff it out real quick sorry You can't go back and polish those inner pieces after you bend it. This guy's there. Oh. Let's get you guys focused up here. I don't know what happened. Am I still alive? Did the stream stop? Okay. Whew. That was scary. I don't know what happened. I hit a button and everything disappeared. There we go. Okay. So let's get this guy bent up. We're going to start with the, we want this guy out. So we're going to start with this, the blade. So I'd like to get this up right about here and I'll flip it over and that leaves this edge up here focus on zoom you guys in a little bit so there's a definite lip in here I'm going to take my mallet and I'm going to tap that down so it's nice and smooth flip this over keep rolling it around Oof. That guy's hard. Okay. That little section was hard. So I'm holding down with my left hand, gives me pressure, and my right hand, which I have more control with, I'm right-handed, um, allows me to hammer it. Right. Now we'll just fold this around. So it's wanting to go off to a side on me and I don't want it to go to that side. I want it to go to the other side. Whoop, right over here. So this is the whole knife. I'm going to say it's a size eight or nine. Size nine. Oop, where are you? All right. We're just going to toss this one right into the tumbler because it's done. It took 
minute or two. Oh, let me get you guys on. Zoom off. There we go. Now my bench, pretty much for everything I do, basically the silverware for, moves from, from one side to the other side to the other side. So now we're going to go this way. And we're going to get, where'd they go? My uh, bolt cutters here. I lock them in my vise. So it makes it easier for that. Let me see if I can bump me down here. Does it snap over here? Let's see. It did. That's cool. Awesome. Okay. Let me get this back to where I can see everything. Okay. Sorry about the mess. I am still moving in. Okay. So this was the one that I set aside. This is going to be my my spiral. It's got a nice, really nice pattern on the end. Spoon goes into the bowl. I'm gonna put this one up here. And we're just going to go through with this. I always say put the side, the side that you're keeping towards you and you're cutting whenever you're cutting the line. That keeps it to where one, you can see the line. Two, you know that you're not over cutting. And repeat. Where is my mark? There it is. And once these are down to the size we want, I'm going to go put them on the buffer because these are pretty, <laughs> pretty tarnished. Tape starting to. My tape is starting to come off. I was putting in, I was installing the, the window in my daughter's camper and I was pulling out a staple that didn't quite go all the way in. And as I was pulling it out with the pliers, the staple popped out and my hand went across the uh, inner trim and my hand decided that it didn't want to fight it <laughs> so it just immediately surrendered and I had to come in and do get a bandage on it real quick some iodine it would probably take a stitch but it was really small so I was able to pinch it closed and it stayed closed so I think I'll be all right
and repeat. Some of the other silverware that I really like to use for the more uh, small rings is the demi toss spoons. Some of them are long enough to be able to take the handles off and use just the handle. That one doesn't have a mark. Um, and a lot of times those have really cool patterns on them. Uh, these are 14 inch uh, CRMO. I got them from Harbor Freight. Down in the description um, is a listing on uh, Amazon of all the tools that I use or comparable to what I use. Um, I got these at Harbor Freight. A lot of people don't have Harbor Freight near them. Um, so the link to just about everything I use is in the description. Um, these work great. It's a lot harder if you don't have a vise. But what I did, come on. I used to have to put them on my leg, get this in here and then push down but that's putting a lot of pressure right here on your leg and some of them are hard you can also mount them but putting them in the vise like this has just been a world of a difference it makes it so much faster you're only lifting one piece that gives you enough room to be able to hold on to both sides of the uh, of the silverware. And this is just a size 14 or a 14 inch. You don't need anything too big for most silverware. Oops, wrong pile. Um, I'll have to go back and look. I'm pretty sure I have them on there. Boop. Do, 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 do. Let's go to here. Turn that. Um, solder, jeweler set, dead blow hammer. Pickle. Blinks. Hmm. You are correct. I don't have them on there. I will have to make sure that I put that on there. Butane torch. Cobalt. Hammer. Yeah, how did that one get past me? I use this thing a lot. Thank you for showing me that. I will make sure that gets fixed. I'll go back to my music. 
Okay, there we go. Whew. If you ever ever seen Weekend at Bernie's, I uh, kind of like Bernie. When the music stops, I slow down. I'm hoping in a couple of weeks I will be able to um, be able to have some more room in here and be able to move over to my my other bench. I've started some uh, sterling silver products. Yeah, I, I absolutely love these. I was cutting them with my bandsaw for a little bit, but this is just so much faster. It does put a little, it does put a little kink on the end here, but that sands off really quickly or files off. Every once in a while I'll get a piece that doesn't really fit, or not fit, but doesn't really want to come apart. Something really thick that I'm working on for a project or something. Almost done with step three. And that is not one, that is not one. All right, so that leaves us with focus on there we go so here's my little batch of forks and spoon heads I won't be needing them get this guy out of the way Everything has a place. Okay, let's see how many we actually have here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 46, 48, 50, 52, 54, 56, 58, 60, 62, 64, 68, wait, that's 66, 68. <laughs> 70, 72, 74, 76, 78. 
So we just did 78 of these guys. Um, so I'm going to try and bring you guys over to the sander. This is my one inch uh, belt sander. Let's put on the zoom. And I think that's as far, okay, that's as close as it's going to let me get. Okay, get the autofocus stopped. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take off this front edge and then I'm going to go at a sharp angle here on the top side and then a shallow angle here so the top gets a big angle so this is my belt the top I'm gonna be at a sharp angle like this and then the bottom I'm gonna be at a lower angle like this so I'll show you what that looks like So this is the top edge. So this is side the side. If you make this too big, you're not going to be able to unwrap it um, whenever you size it up. Because as you size it up, this is going to come into view once you get farther into it. So keep this one small. And then we'll get to the inside one. And so this guy, see how much longer it is, the shiny part, than this one? Because this one is at a shallower angle. So this is the, the inside of the ring. So I'm just going to round off this edge. That just takes off those sharp corners. So this is ready to be turned into a ring. Um, so I'm going to take this guy and here. Um, how was the sound with that uh, whenever that was running, guys? I can turn my mic down if that's easier for you. Uh, but I'll be at this for a few minutes.
Hi Tim.
Thank you for watching, Daniel. Almost done. If you can hear me, this is pretty much the only one I use.
Hello. Okay. Um, it's going to be a few minutes. Turn it off. Okay. Bye. Almost there. Few more to go. Three more. So what I'm looking for, when I'm holding these up, where are you? Over there. See how it's shiny further down on this side than it is this side? That's what I'm looking for whenever I go to put it back. And that's why I'm angling it like this. It's just a slight angle, but it's just enough to get both sides even. So I need to go, I need to push down a little bit this way so I get those even. That's what I'm looking for.
no. Um, Sarah needs a towel though. Her air conditioner is leaking or something. Okay. Woohoo! We made it through that. That is the long, tedious part. Okay. Um, the other long part of this, uh, because I only use, oh, I forgot to show you guys this. So this one here is our long one. What we're going to do is we're not going to make the bevels like we do on these. I'm just going to round it off. So it's just nice and neat. Let me get you under unzoomed here. All right. Okay. So I have this brush right here. Um, it's called a fiber wheel and because I only use that other, because I use the other, what is it, 50 grit, 80 grit, there is tiny, tiny teeth marks in here. Nothing that I would be concerned with, but there is some sharp edges. So normally... I would at this point the ones that aren't super tarnished I would just toss them in my um, in my tumbler and I would tumble these that would take off any edges it would smooth everything out so everything's nice and neat um, and then uh, whenever they were done I'd come back in and I would just start making my making my spoon rings but what I'm going to do is, did I turn that off? Okay. Um, I'll show you guys a couple of these. Sounds like my daughter has an emergency with her air conditioner out um, in the camper right now. So I will leave and then come back for a second. Um, so I'm going to show you how I do this guy and how I use the fiber wheel to get to it. So if you don't have a tumbler right off the bat, you can use your fiber wheel or something with like a black compound, a stiffer wheel here. All right, so I'm gonna hold my breath for this because this thing puts off a ton of junk. So this is all nice and smooth now. that so for the bypass rings the spiral rings if they're easy enough you can just push them right around so you start off at a little angle and this guy's up pretty high I'm just gonna give him a little whack them back over so what I'm looking for is to see from my angle how this is going towards the handle so I wanted to go right past it so right now I'm at the point if I kept going like this it's going to go off from it so I'm going to take this can I get you guys in there closer Sometimes it's hard. OK, 
Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually, it made it around this corner. I'm going to tap it back this way. Loosen it up a little bit. So that's the end of it. I want it down nice and tight. Now I'm going to wrap this around. Nice and tight. And here's a regular one. So this one's gonna just polish up really nice in the tumbler. So I start, oh, this is the reason, this is the underside and this is the top side. So the top has just a real small bevel where the bottom has a sharper bevel because underneath that's gonna be the side touching your skin. If it was like this, you'd have like a big nub running into your finger. So by taking that down to a flatter plane, you get a smoother fit. So I'm gonna go in here. So this has just a little touch. So I've got my candy cane figure on one side. Okay, now I'm gonna put it about the center. And you wanna make sure that this side goes under this side. So right now, it looks like they're gonna go even. So I'm gonna put this in here and I'm gonna bend down more on this side. That's gonna allow this to go over. Now I, once it's over, now I can go back towards the middle. And as you're moving your ring, you can see the tip of the ring wanting to turn. Like this block is four years old. I haven't replaced it. So I'm actually gonna put in the next block down, next mandrel down. I'm gonna take this part just a touch. and get that a little bit rounder. That one needs a lot. Okay, so this one doesn't need polished either. And whenever they're thinner, they're a lot easier to manipulate. Another thing you have to watch out for is over time they're gonna not want to go straight so as you fold them they're gonna t they're gonna kind of angle it's just the way the block gets worn so see how off that is if I turn the ring this is not that way this way Nope. Come on. There we go. Oh, I'm on the wrong, wrong pin. That's why it's not moving. Okay, so what I just did was I made this really small. I'm gonna put it here on my mandrel and I tap it down.
Mm, almost there. I was wondering why it wasn't twisting the ring. And the metal always springs back. Come on. There we go. Okay. So now by hammering it on the mandrel, I've been able to get it straighter. So that's one way. If you tweak the ring a little bit, you can watch the front slide over. So that's how I'm getting the main ring shape. Now I'll go through and I will do all of these and just toss them off here onto the side and then later on because there is that flat spot right right there it's this spot right here so what I do is I put the pin right where these two meet so if you run it down right where that flat spot is I'm going to bring this down and I'm just barely going to just a touch more and now we've got a round ring All right, so what I have to do now is I have to buff all these out because I'm not able to tumble them right now. Let me get you guys back here. Zoom out. Okay, and it looks like I'm going to have to take five and try and figure out how to fix her um, air conditioner but I want to thank everybody who stopped by I will be back on here in just a little bit um, I don't know how long it's going to take me it shouldn't take me too long um, but I will mark it as part two for this live um, so I will be on and again thank you guys um, if United will come back. Uh, please subscribe and hit the bell. And thank you so much for coming and watching me for a little bit. All right, I'm going to pause this and we'll start it up again whenever I get back.